Hey everyone, so I've had a lot of comments about um, gold and why I'm holding the GLD ETF instead of buying uh, the commodity. Uh, so I thought I'd make a video about how I trade gold on Intoro. Now what's the difference between holding the commodity, the ETF, what's the difference in fees? Uh, can you buy it as individual stocks in like gold mining companies? And also a bit about buying gold off eToro, other ways I've bought gold, which I've talked about before, but you know, it's big at the moment, gold, a lot of people into it. Before I get to that, before I get to this and the, the ETFs and stuff, I just want to talk a bit about how not to trade gold. And for that, uh, it comes from my own experience. So I have to cast my mind back to 2016. So in 2016, I just joined the site. I knew nothing about trading, nothing about investing. I didn't know what buy and sell meant. I didn't really know anything about gold, but obviously everyone's heard of gold. I wanted to get rich. I wanted to make some quick money, and I didn't have much money, all right? So here's what had happened. I wake up in the morning. First thing in the morning, I'm barely awake. This, when I started using this site, when I started using eToro, I was instantly obsessed. I mean, it was a very short amount of time before I was really excited, really into it, as a lot of new people may be now. And, you know, everything was just about, all right, I'll look at the markets, trading was exciting, I was engaged. So I'd wake up, eyes still red, not even like awake in the morning, I've been up two minutes. Grab my laptop, which would be on the bed, because I've been up looking at stocks really late at night. And the first thing I'd do, I'd flip open the laptop and I'd go to the gold page, because I knew about gold. I didn't, I, I'd heard of gold, and boom, I go to open a trade. Now when, when I was new, obviously I didn't have a lot of money, and so uh, I, I wanted to make the most of the money I had. And in order to do that, there was this thing called leverage. I'd never heard of that before. What I did know is that it made your trade sizes much bigger. So it's like, wow, it's like magic money. Like, this is amazing. Like, if, I, if I'm gonna win at this speed, I can now win at this speed, you know. I can also lose at that speed, much more importantly. Times 10 leverage. Now at the time you could use, I think you could use even more. I think they've lowered it to times 10 now. I think there were, there were more. I'm not, I can't remember. I know they lowered the leverage on everything. But I was using like a lot of leverage. Now, the thing about leverage is, um, if you don't know about it, a lot of people when they're new, they lose money in trading. A lot, the majority, like 90%, something silly, lose money in, in trading. And I think one of the reasons for this, one of the reasons I lost money anyhow, is overuse of leverage. So when you use leverage, you make a trade, it's like amplifying it. If you've got $1 and you times 10, it's now like you're trading with $10. So you're, you're, you make money much faster and you lose money much faster. Now if you make money much faster, that's awesome. Yay, we're making money much faster. When you lose it, something happens, okay? There are two big emotions which traders, really, you think it's because they're smart. You think it's because they're clever. But really, they've learned to control or be aware of fear and greed. Fear and greed, man, they're like in, in all humans, okay, and affecting traders a lot. So what had happened, what happens with leverage is that it, if you, when you lose money, you can lose money so quickly that the fear kicks in. When the fear kicks in, you make bad decisions. Those bad decisions statistically mean you're going to lose money. You'll close trades too early, close them at loss. This is what had happened. I'd open the trade. Now, when, when a, an asset goes up, let's say gold's going up, it doesn't go from here to here and just go up like this. It generally goes like this. It's, a, it's up and down and up, and it may be generally going up, but it's spiking all over the place. I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about trading. I didn't know how the markets moved. Nothing. I just see it's going up or it's going down. I think that's, you know, the be all and end all. So what happened is I'd open a trade, it'd start going down. Because I'm using a lot of leverage, it's dropping far quicker than I can afford. You know, the trade's been open four minutes and I've lost $10. And I'm thinking, all right, another four minutes, I may have lost another $10. All I can see is that I'm losing money, I'm losing money quickly, I think I've made a mistake, I'm new, I don't know what I'm doing, boom, I close the trade. I close the trade, I'm now minus $10, and then I see gold going up again, I'm thinking, whoa, I leave it going up because I think it's going to go down, I think it's not going down, it seems to keep going up, I'll open another trade. I'd invariably open it right at the top, it starts going down again, same thing, I'm losing money, I'm panicking, the panic kicks in. I close the trade. I close the trade at another $10 loss. This happened so many times. And I've literally, I've just woke up, okay? And what got, what started me trading when I'd just woken up? Something called, they call it FOMO, the fear of missing out. It's the other part, greed. You see, I think, oh my God, it, you know, this is, there's never been a situation like this before. Look, look what gold's doing. Gold's making a huge move. And if we look at gold at the moment, I'd imagine there's a lot of people with this thinking at the moment. A lot of people will be FOMOing in, hold on, that's one minute, I was trying to show why not to use one minute charts, but here we are, up here, look at this rise, bam, it's suddenly gone up, these are one week, let's put it on one day, each one of these bars represents one day, can you imagine 
the fear of missing out, which is currently going on with gold. Now that's fine, it may keep going up and all the rest of it, but me with my fear of missing out, I would dive into the trade, use too much leverage, it invariably goes like this, because that looks nice and clean, look, it's all going up. But if you put that on a 10 minute chart, it starts to look like this, look at it. Each one of these is now 10 minutes, over shorter time frames, it's always doing this. And um, my fear would kick in using too much leverage, losing money too quickly, losing money. I think in the second month of my trading, I lost like 38% by doing this. So be careful using too much leverage. That's my, my bit of experience. If I can pass anything on to you, it's how quickly you can lose money trying to trade gold or anything with a, a, a mixture of inexperience, too much leverage, and possibly tiredness or not really being conscious. It's ridiculous. It's just gambling, you know. Jay used to make fun of me for this. If you're watching Jay, he'll remember it. Like late 2016 or 2017, I was still doing it. And he'd be, you know, we'd have these conversations where he'd be pointing it out. You know, hey, Tom, how's it going, man? Hey, Jay, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. How's it going? I saw, I, I saw you training gold again the other day. Not, I mean, yeah, li uh, maybe a little. Not, I mean, not a lot and stuff. I mean, you know, just, I don't know, like... Yeah, I've, I've been training a little bit of gold, a little bit, just a, a bit though, just a tiny bit. You're back on the leverage, you're back on the leverage, aren't you? You know, I don't, I don't see what's wrong with a little leverage. You've been first thing in the morning, I, I remember you. What do you want, times two? Times five? Times ten? What do you want, Tom? Uh, times, uh, <coughs> times a hundred. <coughs> what? Times a times hundred, man. Time, times a hundred. Times a hundred? Uh, yeah, and... Uh, first thing in the morning. You're using times 100 leverage first thing in the morning. You know, I'm, I'm kind of losing a lot of money there, Jake. Yeah, I'm using times 100 first thing in the morning. I wake up, I start trading. It's insane. I got a problem. You can't, you can't be doing this. I mean, that's insane. I mean, sometimes I'm starting to see it, you know. I'll be talking to someone. All of a sudden, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start seeing like leverage all over them. I just see leverage everywhere. It's happening right now, isn't it? You're seeing leverage all over them. What? Tom, you're gonna have to sort this out, man. Hey! Come on, get on the cryptos with me. Yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll try them cryptos out for a bit. Yeah, ooh. I mean, it was ridiculous. I and mean, he couldn't tell me, like, he'd tell me, what are you doing? He'd just be laughing, like, and I'd just be trying to hide it. You know, I'd be like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm using times 10 leverage. I'd be trying to keep it quiet because I, every time I went to make the trade, I just thought, I have so little money. What's the point of doing it with times one? What am I gonna make, five bucks? Forget that, I wanna make the big bucks. I wanna make something significant. Classic noob, bad idea, you know? It's not worth making this much money consistently. I wanna make the big score, and yeah, you end up losing. So there, there's that. Be careful with that stuff, because you know a lot of people lose money. I did. Anyhow, so with the GLD, uh, why am I investing in, in the ETF rather than the commodity? So here's the thing. If I go to uh, the, let's go to the gold page. Gold being the actual commodity represents actual gold. Here you see markets, commodities, gold, CFD. It's actually a CFD of gold. If you don't know what CFD is, here you have the real asset, here you have a CFD. It's a derivative which exactly mimics the price of the real asset. So you buy this, and if the real, a gold, this is gold, gold CFD. They move at exactly the same time. There's no lag, it's not like, they're like boom, boom. If gold goes up, the CFD goes up. They're mathematically tied. So it's a way, it's an instrument that you can buy, an asset you can buy, which you can make money off or lose money exactly as if you were buying gold, but you don't actually own the asset. So this is a CFD. Now, the ETF is not a CFD, okay? It's an actual ETF, which is an exchange-traded fund. Now, with CFDs on eToro, you get overnight and weekend fees. So my idea was to hold gold, hold this trade open. I thought, all right, gold may be going up for a while. The economy's looking in real trouble. So I'm gonna uh, hold on to gold because people I've been listening to, economists have said it's a, it's a safe place. People put money in there when everything's going a bit mad. People sometimes use gold as a sort of a safe haven asset. Um, so this one, the ETF, if I hold on to it, I don't get charged these overnight and weekend fees. What are these overnight and weekend fees? So let's say I hold the gold CFD. I buy it on Wednesday and I sell it on Thursday. Wednesday to Thursday, I've held it overnight. And there's a tiny little fee, which I'll get charged by eToro, just for that having it overnight. And on weekend, it's two or three nights. I can't remember, weekend, I think it's two, Saturday and Sunday. But there we are. So there's overnight and weekend fees, a tiny little amount proportionally. But if you're gonna hold that asset over a long time, they can add up. Now, I had originally bought 
the, the uh, commodity. And people pointed out, if you buy the ETF, Tom, you don't get charged fees. Thank you to all the viewers. So that's why I switched to the ETFs. Now, if you want to see more about that, you can go here to the help section and you see our fees here. Just click that and it will show you all about the fees. So over here, stocks and ETFs, the ETF, GLD, the one I have is an ETF. When buying a stock or an ETF on eToro, you gain ownership and the underlying asset is held in your name. No rollover fees, no ticket fees, no management fees. Rollover fees is another way of saying overnight and weekend fees. So there are no fees. I can hold it indefinitely. If the ETF goes up in value, I've made money. If it goes down in value, I've lost money. But there's no additional little fees. So over here with uh, CFDs, oh, I can't get to it. Oh, come on. Oh, really? I can't get to it because the menus? Hold on a second. If I go to the CFDs here, currencies, commodities. So look, the commodities are CFDs. Oil, there's gold. It's a CFD. And I will get charged overnight and weekend fees for holding that. So, meh. Now, another way to invest in gold is to actually buy companies which uh, mine gold, which actually bring it out of the ground. So you can go here to it's stocks and shares. And stocks and shares, if you buy them and you don't use leverage, because you can do, uh, then you don't get charged these rollover or we overnight and weekend fees either. So this one here, gold, Barrett gold. I could buy this and I could hold that and that would give me exposure to gold as well. And if I use no leverage and it's a buy trade, if you open a sell trade, it's automatically a CFD. If you use leverage or open a sell trade, it's a CFD. If you want to know what sell trades are, I made a video about them as well. It's a way to make money as the price goes down. But here we're talking about if I'm buying it and I'm holding it, Times one leverage, no rollover or weekend fees. Same as an ETF, okay, different thing. But if you own uh, by this, it's subject to the same forces that companies are subject to. So if there's a scandal or if, you know, there's an accounting error or if there's something which, you know, happens to the company, then the price can go down. It's not directly linked to gold. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of, it's a company which mines gold. So if the if gold goes up, its fortunes should do well. But there are also other factors which might weigh on the price and affect your investment. So it's a slightly different set of thinking. Um, one of the things that I'm actually looking at at the moment, which is quite interesting, is an ETF called GDJ or GDXJ, this one here. So this is quite an interesting thing. So if you don't know what a, a uh, an ETF, an ETF can sometimes represent a single commodity or it can represent, um, uh, you know, indices or something. It can also represent um, a group of companies. So an ETF is an exchange traded fund. A fund uh, usually contains several different companies or assets, you know, gives you exposure to one part of the market. They can represent many different things. And a fund, what you've got is these fund managers have put this fund together and said, all right, this fund represents junior gold miners. So gold companies which mine for gold, they actually get the gold out of the ground. And it's not the big ones like Barrett Gold, the company we looked at before. These are the juniors. They're smaller cap companies. Now, Normally, people could go and they could try and find a mix of them so they're exposed to junior gold miners. But these guys came along and they made a fund. And the fund manager says, all right, we're going to put these different companies in. We think this accurately represents it. And people trust that fund manager so much that instead of searching for their own ways to put a fund together, they just buy their fund. The fund itself, GDXJ, becomes so popular, it's put on an exchange, like the New York Stock Exchange or wherever. It's an exchange-traded fund, an ETF. It's The fund managers are so trusted that lots of people just buy into that fund and go, yeah, yeah, all right, we trust them to have put the best one together. That's how, what exchange-traded funds are. Now, this one here, the last one we were looking at a single company. This represents um, junior gold miners, all right? So companies which are... Uh, mining gold and they're not large cap. Now, why might I be interested in that? This is not investment advice. I'm just listening to people and these are my ideas. Please do not do what just because I'm saying this. This is just how I can approach gold investing on eToro or anywhere. Um, so for instance, right now, uh, gold is doing uh, very well. The price of gold is going up. So these gold mining companies, that's going to be making them more profit. Now, at the same time, we've had this global slowdown where there's been a lack of transportation, the global demand for goods went down because people were sick and people were worried. So the price of oil plummeted. It went down like 20% or whatever. Now, gold mining companies, one of their biggest expenses is oil. You see, it's one of their major overheads. They need oil to keep going. So what's happened with these, these mining companies? The price of their overheads has gone down. They're having to spend less on oil. 
And also, gold's going up, so their profitability's going up. So at the moment, their profit margin has gone huge. Hey, so the trade idea is that during those times when gold mining companies have a lot of money to spend, the big companies, Barrick or other big mining companies, it's a good time for acquisitions. They might try and buy the smaller cap junior gold mining companies. That's the idea. So you see how kind of complex the ideas behind your exposure to gold can get. So I'm going to buy, I'm going to invest in this. I don't know if I'll invest in it all at once or over the next few weeks. And don't do it just because I'm saying it because I don't know what I'm talking about. I could be wrong, but I'm listening to people. Thanks, Mike, and other people, you know. Um, but that's sort of how I can approach gold investing. These are all different ways. I can buy just straight the commodity. Uh, I can buy the ETF and just hold, buy and hold it. Or I can start looking at individual companies, which I think might do well or have good management, like Barrett Gold or whatever. I think they'll do well, and maybe I can get dividends from them if I'm going to hold it over for five years. You can have a look. I made a series of videos about what dividends are. They're a way that companies entice people to hold on to their stocks for a long time by giving them a little bit of money at sporadic times throughout the year. Okay, so maybe I want to uh, invest in individual companies for divi dividends. Maybe I want to invest in a series, a selection of gold mining companies, smaller cap ones. I don't know which ones might be bought, but this probably has a few in there. So that's the, that's the goal, is that if one of those ones is bought by a big company, that increase in their share price will affect the overall price of this. It's a bit complicated, but do you see what I mean? There's lots of different ways of having exposure, which I find quite interesting. Now, um, apart from all of this stuff uh, and ways of holding gold here, and of course, if I buy this ETF at times one, I'll still have no overnight and no weekend fees. So, apart from all this, one of the ways I was buying um, gold was I was buying it on Offy Toro here, the European Mint. Now, a month and a half ago, or two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when I looked at the site, you could buy three different coins. That's all that was left. All the supply chains had been blocked up. No one was traveling. There was no international transport. Everyone had been buying gold, apparently, and because it's seen as a safe haven. It's seen as a safe place. Everything's volatile. Buy gold. Because at the moment, we're speculating. Right? I'm only Toro speculating, trying to hoping I buy an asset and the price of asset goes up. But another reason people sometimes invest in gold is not just because the price of the asset might go up, but they're fearing that the price of their cash, their money in the bank, might go down. You see, everything else might go down. And what they often say is that everything else goes down, gold can sometimes say, um, stay more stable, either go up in value or not lose money as quickly as everything else. So people put their money in not to make huge speculative gains off gold, but sometimes to just keep what they have a bit more stably safe. Now, I don't know if that's always true, but it's historically, that's how people see it. So all of this had gone like a few weeks ago, and now look at it, it's all back. It's all back, the supply chains have opened up again and there's lots of gold. Now I've bought gold, I made videos about me buying gold and silver through this site before. I'm thinking that's another way of getting it, you know, it's a way of having no counterparty risk. There's not eToro in the middle, there's no one else who's got my ETF, it doesn't depend on anyone else. If I've got the physical metal, Yay, you know, it's kind of like the safest way. The problem with that is I have to keep it safe and I have to go and put it in a safety deposit box. And who am I going to sell it to if I ever want to? There's hassles involved in owning actual physical metals, but also security. It's a bit like me talking about mobile um, crypto wallets on your phone versus a hardware wallet. Same sort of thing. Ease of use in eToro and possibly you can make money speculating and all the rest of it and everyone does versus ultimate security plus some hassle. This always seems to be that trade-off. Anyhow, so I'm going to buy some more of this. A question for you. If you had $2,000, because an ounce is about $2,000 at the moment, that's why I say it. What would you buy? Uh, a troy ounce is 31.103 grams. So let's say 31.1 grams. It's not the same as a normal ounce. Uh, metals are measured in troy ounces, slightly more grams. So 31.1 uh, grams. Would you buy 31 one gram coins? We'll go with the Canadian maple leaf. 31 one gram coins. 10 one tenth of an ounce coins, or would you buy, where's the, where's the next one? Would you buy two half ounce coins? Wait, there's, there should be four quarter ounce coins somewhere. Four quarter ounce coins, two half ounce coins, or one one ounce coin. Now look at this. So that is 1,806. So if I buy it as one ounce, you get it for 1,806. But if I buy 31.01, uh, 31.1, times 65.01, it's actually 
2021. So to buy the same amount, but in, in gram form, is going to be $200 more expensive than buying the same ounce in a one ounce form. Which would you do? This way, maybe it's easier to carry it around and you've got a one ounce coin, it's shiny, it's beautiful. If you ever need to trade it for chickens and there's zombies everywhere, maybe you can bite bits off or smelt it down, trade it for chickens and tacos, I don't know. Um, it, you know, a lot of people also are preparing kind of for the end. So you've got different people buying gold. What would you do? Would you buy the big one ounce coin and pay a little less? Would you buy the uh, two half ounce coins? Maybe a bit easier to trade if it ever comes to trading, hopefully not. Um, would you buy four quarter ounce coins or 10 one tenth ounce coins or would you go all the way down to the one which is probably easiest to trade for chickens and peanuts? Would you trade it? Would you get the one gram coins, 31 one gram coins? I don't know. I don't know which way to go. Right, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm leaning towards a bit of a mixture um, because I don't know. It's harder to carry though, you know, if you've got 31. What if you lose them and stuff? Mind you, what if you lose an ounce? Anyhow, uh, and I'm also, I think I'm going to buy some silver. By the way, that GDX uh, ETF here, GDXJ, I also wanted to get some more exposure to silver because silver's just off the scale doing well. You know, that ratio between gold and silver has really closed back and silver's really unbelievably doing well. Now, I, I couldn't find a, a junior silver miners ETF on eToro. One of the things about eToro is it is sometimes a bit limited. If you want to find an ETF aimed at a certain sector, go online, look for it, you know, what is, what's in GDX, and you can find out what's in the GDX, uh, uh, um, GDXJ ETFs. It's easy to find that on Google. But then if you find one that you like, you think, all right, that represents the sector I want to invest in, you go to eToro and sometimes they don't have it. They have some of the major ones, but I noticed they didn't have just a silver-focused ETF in the same way for, for miners. But... People on eToro, thank you for your comments, did point out that the GDXJ also has exposure to the silver miners. So I'll have a little, mostly it's gold, but I'll have a little silver miners exposure as well. So that's great. So let me know in the comments, which way would you buy this? Because I'm going to buy some more silver. I think what I want to buy is the Krugerrands, uh, which are a South African mint coin, um, uh, the silver one. Where is it? My God, there's a lot of silver. Look how much silver there is now. Silver everywhere. Have I already gone by it? Have I already gone past it? Probably. Um, this one here. The 2020 one ounce South African one rand silver Krugerrand coin BU. Brilliant uncirculated. Means it's really shiny and it's never been passed around. That's what BU means. I think I want to buy like, you know, some of them. Maybe 10 of them or something or whatever. I love the coins. They're very beautiful but very impractical. Silver weighs a lot. It's heavy, it's big, it's hard to transport around. It's not a practical thing. Gold obviously takes up less space and it's beautiful, but it takes up less space. You can cram a lot of value into a very little space with gold. With silver, not a lot of value and it's very heavy, like uh, to carry around. That's why, you know, uh, gold is kind of, when people have a lot of money, they start going for gold, even when they don't, you know. Anyhow, uh, let me know what you think. I hope that was a little bit useful and sort of explains, because people have been asking, why have you got the ETF? Why not just get the commodity? It's all overnight and weekend fees. So uh, ETFs and the companies, uh, if I buy the stocks, I'd buy them times one leverage so I don't have to pay the overnight fees. ETFs times one leverage, don't have to pay the overnight fees. The commodity, I'd have to pay the overnight and weekend fees. Don't want to do that. Um, you know, also when I'm copying people, there are people I'm copying who are investing in gold. So I have a little bit, tiny bits of exposure that way. So there we are. I hope you're doing well. It's like 36 degrees here. I'm wearing this jumper because I kind of, I thought it looked nice, but I'm sweating. It's so hot here. I hope wherever you are, it's not too hot, not too cold, and you're doing well. And yeah, uh, I, it's not investment advice, but be very careful using a lot of leverage and FOMO, fear of missing out. Be really careful of that fear, that greed and leverage. I, as a new trader, lost 38% in a month trying this stuff. If there's anything I can say, just... You know, one thing I didn't realize, I always thought in the beginning that this trade was the make it or break it trade. There'll never be another opportunity like this. If I don't get it now, if I don't make a lot of money now, I may never make it. It's the wrong thinking. The markets, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, f forever, are going like this. And every up and down is an opportunity to make money. All of it, there is no, it's never, this is the last trade, this is the last time I can make money. And it always seems like that when you're new. Okay, so watch out for that thinking.
Like it's never, now's the only time. Don't worry, five minutes later, 10 minutes later, 30 minutes later, there's another opportunity to make money all the time. You're not gonna miss out because it's not now. Does that make any sense? Anyhow, hope you're doing well. See you.